up guys how are you doing welcome to movie important is best of the decade i hope you guys are having a great day if you guys like what you see hit the subscribe button join movie up for him hit that notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next and of course comment below on any video that you watch on my channel uh so it's pretty crazy to think that we're officially through another decade of the 2000s there's been a lot of great films in this decade so many that not only have i forgotten about films but it's just impossible to make a list for the top, you know, 10 films of the decade. I mean, think about that, you know, 10 years, hundreds upon thousands of movies have been released. But you have to make a list somehow or you have to find a way to break these movies down to why they're most important to you. Especially in the decade because these are movies that are the cream of the crop, will stand to the test of time, and are just fantastic movies. But the problem with this list is everybody's going to be different and not everybody's going to agree with your list. Actually, 99% of the people will not agree with your list because it's completely different than what they believe. But, you know, I had fun doing it. I've been kind of counting down what I think are my top 10. Also, five honorable mentions, which I'll mention. But just remember, this is my opinion. So... So the first honorable mention, of course, is Source Code, which is directed by Duncan Jones. Fantastic film. The next one is Edge of Tomorrow, which is one of my favorite sci-fi action films of the decade. The next one is Boyhood, which is so close to getting in my top 10 because I love that movie so much. The next one is Looper, Ryan Johnson's fantastic sci-fi time travel film that had Bruce Wallace in it. And the last one is The Martian, which is Ridley Scott, Matt Damon movie, which I thought was fantastic. So those are five films that just barely missed out of the top 10. Like I said, this decade is stacked with great movies, as it always is. So doing a top 10 like that is really hard to do. But these films are definitely ones I recommend, just made missed the top 10, so... But with that said, let's go into the top 10, which I'm sure will be controversial for most people. So number 10 is Alex Garland has been one of those like up and coming writers for the longest time. He's worked with Danny Boyle on stuff like Sunshine and 28 Days Later. He's developed a great career. You know, it's a fan. It's a fun thing to watch, you know, what he has done, what he has become in the sci fi genre. And that's why Ex Machina is number 10 on my list. Ex Machina kind of just blew me away that year. The year it came out, I think it was like 2015 or something like that. It was a movie that had Dom Ho Gleason and Oscar Isaac pre-Star Wars, the, you know, Last Jedi, Force Awakens. And it's a movie about, you know, artificial intelligence and how taking artificial intelligence can become a problem where the deus ex machina comes into effect and everybody in this movie is just on point this is alice garland's best film to date it's just an amazing film to watch then you got alicia vikander who just came out of nowhere and is fantastic in this movie she is you know beautiful she you'll you feel for her but she kind of has a sinister side to her but it shows you the kind of the cautionary tale of what technology and ai advancement and technology can do and that's why it's such a great film so at number 10 you know it's not a shady spot it's a great spot to be at but there's, there's like nine other films but ex machina fantastic film one of the best of the decade so number nine is it's it's a fascinating movie that i had no interest in watching i love david fincher to death i think aaron sorkin's one of the best writers in hollywood but a movie about facebook a movie called the social network i mean come on who thought that movie was going to be any good well, I was completely wrong. This movie is not only great, but it's one of the best of the decade, just on pure acting and writing and tense nature. You know, Jesse Eisenberg is playing Mark Zuckerberg. Andrew Garfield is in this movie who got, like, criminally robbed of an Oscar nomination. Justin Timberlake is at his finest. Rooney Mara just shows the acting chops that she has. Justin Marzella. Just anybody in this movie and just the building nature and just the, you know, Army Hammer as the, the twins is fantastic. This movie just builds upon what is a very disturbing nature of technology and keeps building and building and building to a point where it just completely implodes and explodes upon itself and there's so much good stuff in here aaron sorkin's dialogue is just mind-blowingly good just watch the first scene of this movie as soon as it starts and you know what you're getting yourself into so social network number nine on my list one of the best of the decade so number eight is so when we get into Christopher Nolan, it's you can cherry pick any movie that he's ever done, maybe outside of Dark Knight Rises, which a lot of people don't like, and just get something uniquely whole and just completely different out of him. And that's why Inception is on this list. This movie is unlike anything I've ever seen before. This movie is powerful, it's dark, it's interesting, it's scary. You know, they're dealing with Inception, which is going into the people's minds to kind of 
plant seeds, you know, the way it's layered, how it just completely collapses upon itself each time it's layered. And it's, it's not confusing at all when you're watching, you're watching and you're actually able to follow everything because of how well it's constructed. And then on top of that, you got Leonardo DiCaprio, you got Michael Caine, you got Ellen Page, you got Ken Watanabe, Tom Hardy, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Uh, I'm, you know, there's other people in this movie, but you just got this amazing cast that was able to concoct something that is so riveting, you know, when they go into the, like the lower depths of the inception and you're actually seeing the different levels and how they're responding to time. It just, it's an amazing thing to watch and is one of Christopher Nolan's best. And I, there's, you've seen it, everybody saw it. It's a great, fantastic film. So it's one of the best of the decade. So at number seven, we have. So in 2011, we had what I consider one of the most original horror films ever made, and it took forever for this movie to be released. That is, of course, Drew Goddard and Joss Whedon's Cabin in the Woods. Let me tell you what about this movie. This movie is something unique and something I've never seen before, like Inception. It takes the horror Cabin in the Woods or horror genre and deconstructs it into an amazing just look at the crazy and zaniness of the genre itself. You know, we have these five characters who were in this cabin in the woods, like a typical story, but they're being controlled by this underground facility. And the underground facility, we have, you know, uh, Richard Jenkins and Bradley Whitford and Sigourney Weaver. And then we have all these creatures in this elevator area. And we have, you know, Kristen Conley and Chris Hensworth before Thor and Franz Kranz. And this movie is just, it's so well written. It's so well designed. It's so well paced. And it has so many great surprises. It has such a great payoff, especially when the Franz Kranz and Kristen Conley go down in the elevator and they open up and all the demons come out. And then you see all the creatures and like it, they're so uniquely written and there's so many great uh, callbacks to different characters from like different other horror films. It's a movie that just stands on its own as something wholly unique and wholly terrifying. And when we get to the final conclusion, the decisions that are made completely upend any horror film I've ever seen in my entire life. And it's such a good film. I'm glad it was released and I'm glad we have it. It's one of Joss Whedon and Drew Goddard's best films. So it's also one of the great films of the decade. So anyways, we'll head into number six, which is 1917 is a movie that literally I just saw like a couple weeks ago or a month ago or whatever this video post. And this movie is something that just completely blew me away. This is Sam Mendes' best film. There's no other film like this movie. I mean, that is an essence of what it's trying to do. You know, the one-shot takes, the fact that Roger Deakins and his colors and his use of photography and how he's using it, the fact they're following George McKay and Dean Charles Chapman everywhere, the cast, Colin Firth, Benedict Cumberbatch, you know, so on and so forth, and then Thomas Newman's score, the chaotic nature. This is the funny part about this war movie is it seems like every 20 years or so or every 10 years or so, whatever it is, we get a war film like this or we get a film like this that completely changes the landscape of filmmaking in essence. And I want to put this movie higher, but there's so many good films that came out this year or in this decade. But this movie just stands above everything else I've seen in 2019 and of the decade. It's just everything this movie does and just watch my watch my you know review but everything that this movie does everything that how it plays out the emotional impact that this movie has and the resonance that this movie does in its nature of filmmaking it just cannot not be stated how good this film is and it definitely deserves a top 10 spot in my decade of the year or decade you know films so definitely check it out when 1917 comes out hopefully it comes out soon for everyone so yeah, at number six, 1917. So anyways, number five is. So in 2017, we have Logan. Logan is, it's a movie that is just remarkable. It's the, one of the best superhero movies ever made. And it takes a character that we've loved for, at this point, almost 20 years now with Logan, you know, Wolverine, and completely upends the whole idea of who uh, Logan and Wolverine is. He's the guy that we thought was indestructible, but here we got a character that's really old, that is having problems with his health, that is not recovering like he used to, can barely, you know, he's having to take medicines, having to take drugs, he's weathered. It's just, it's one of the most amazing performances from Hugh Jackman, and it's such a shame he didn't get an Oscar nomination for this role, because he's fantastic. The other crime of nature to not get an Oscar nomination is Patrick Stewart as Charles Xavier. The fact that he is his mental illness is like, you know, 
his mind is going and he's losing his ability to remember anything. He, there's this, he's never shown, but it's insisted upon about how he killed all the X-Men because of his nature of, you know, his mental illness. It's one of, you know, one of Patrick Stewart's best performances of a character he's also done almost 20 years now. And it, the, the moments in this between him and Charles Xavier, between uh, Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart are just mind-blowingly good. And it's one of James Mangold's best films he's ever made. And, you know, it has Stephen Merchant and it has the great Daphne King in this movie who was like for her first movie and she's fantastic as the clone of Wolverine. And just the heartbreak nature and the sad but hopeful nature that this film presents and the end of a character that we've come to love so much. This movie is just brilliant. I'm, glad, I'm so glad it at least got a script nomination because it's a fantastic just look at a superhero movie that's a deconstruction western, and it's great. So at number five is Logan. I'm sure a lot of people agree to how high that movie is, but yeah. So anyways, number four is... So 2014 brought Damien Chazelle in with a bang. He had done one other film prior to this, but it was like a short film or whatever. Whiplash is an amazing film. It's a film about passion it's a film about the lengths we will go to do what we really truly love and it brings in some of the most scary most awe-inspiring performances from miles teller and jk simmons jk simmons especially who won an oscar for this movie this movie is just heartbreaking to watch because people who are this passionate about anything will put hours upon hours into it and the people that are driving these people are not always the most friendliest of people. You know, you look at Hollywood types or you look at, you know, uh, professors of music or you just look at people in general who have like complete drives and it will break you. It will put you in another realm of just despair. But when this movie ends and we get that fantastic drum solo at the very end and we see the passion on Miles Teller's face and we see the drive on J, uh, J.K. Simmons' face, this movie just becomes a whole nother level of just insane movie making. And I wanted to put La La Land on this top 10, but because of what Whiplash did and what it does and how it presents and how these two characters just really mesh together, there's a reason that people love this movie. And it's a reason that it's such a great film. And Whiplash is just something that you need to watch to truly understand why this movie is so great. So at number four is Whiplash. And at number three, we have... Bob Preschetti, Peter Ramsey, and Rodney Rothman created a film called Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse with uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller. How, you, how can you not talk about this being the best of the decade? This movie is insane with its premise, but is insanely good with what it's doing. This movie brought me pure joy, pure tears, pure excitement, just pure everything. This movie is as good as it gets for a comic book movie. You know, I mentioned Logan earlier, but this movie is just on a whole nother level. This movie is one of the best animated movies ever made. This is one of the best, most creative things I've ever seen. And it creates a new level of animation that is tops everything I've ever seen. You know, one of my favorite movies is Toy Story. And this movie deserves a place right next to it as one of the most inventive films I've ever seen in my entire life. And on top of that, you know, you have like Shameik Moore playing Miles Morales. We've never seen Miles Morales before. We have, you know, Nicolas Cage playing... Um, you know, Spider Noir, we have Haley Seinfeld playing Spider Gwen. It just keeps rolling and rolling. And it's just, you've seen, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But this movie is just the art style, the inventiveness, the use of the, you know, the cell animation, the use of the, you know, blocks that they use in like comic books. It, it's just a creative film. And it just, it deserves every praise that it gets. And it, I'm so glad it won the Oscar for, you know, best animated film. But. If you haven't seen this movie, if you haven't seen Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse, please check it out because you will probably be as blown away as I was. So, But that's at number three, and number two is... Daniel Kaluuya, Allison Williams, Lakeith Stanfield, Bradley Whitford, Kathleen Keener, Lil Rat Howery, and Caleb Landry Jones. What did those all have in common? That's right, they were in the Jordan Peele movie Get Out. So... I went to see Get Out because I was interested in what Jordan Peele was going to bring to the horror genre. He's mostly known for, you know, Key and Peele, you know, which is a fantastic comedic uh, variety special. But he's doing something completely different here. He's actually taking on the horror genre, which, as we know now, he's fantastic at doing. But at the time, we're like, so we have a comedic director who had just done Keanu, which wasn't a very good film. He's going to do a film about... 
you know, racist stereotypes and racism. And he's going to put it into a horror film about invasion of the body snatchers. How is this going to work? And boy, how do not only does it work, but it works well. It's a fantastic film. You know, Jason Blum with like whiplash was one of the producers on this movie. And this is what makes Jason Blum the best producer on the market outside of, you know, the a 24 crew. He was able to usher in with Jordan Peele something so wholly unique and something wholly special that it just watching this film as it kind of pieces itself together and kind of breaks down everything, you know, how it has like the different moments and different feels and different touches, and how it's playing, how Daniel Kaluuya is like very skeptical of everything with Kathleen Keener and Bradley Whitford, how Kathleen Keener is kind of manipulating him, how. He's trying to like tell everyone what's going on. It's just this movie is just there. There is it, I oh my god, this movie is fantastic. I'm gonna talk about this movie eventually in one of my re flashback reviews. But just the performances, you know, Daniel Kaluuya got an Oscar nomination for this. You know, Jordan Peele won an Oscar for the best screenwriting. He got best picture. There's a reason for that. It's a touchstone. It's a milestone of the decade. It's a milestone of filmmaking, and it brings out a director and a writer who can do anything he wants now because he created such a phenomenal look into a different type of you know genre that he's never done before and they got steven root in this movie which is even better so but there you go that's number two with get out fantastic film us as well check that out as well but anyways so with number one this is it this is the best film of the decade and it is not slender man but that is the worst <laughs> worst film of the decade so but number one best film of the decade is so 2015 was an interesting year for movies. Ex Machina came out, you know, like I said, that's my number 10 film. But no other film of this decade has done what Mad Max Fury Road did. And Mad Max Fury Road is going to be in a lot of people's number ones because this movie melted my brain. And I said this in a Facebook post one time when I went to see this movie early. This movie is one of the best action movies ever made. There, there's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. This is one of George Miller's best movies. This is a movie that took action films to a whole new level of filmmaking people wanted to copy this film and it's almost impossible there's no words to express how good this movie really is yes it doesn't really have a story and they're going back and forth but you have charlie theron in this movie who should have gotten an oscar nomination i'm so glad this movie got the oscar nominations it did like best picture because it definitely deserved it you have nicholas holt who plays ducks and nicholas holt should have gotten an oscar nomination tom hardy's in this movie is mad max but he doesn't He's not like the reason behind this movie is, you know, Furioso with Charlie Theron. The action in this movie, the fact that most of 99% of it's live action, the races and the, the chases, you know, the movement with the cars, the fact that they got stunt people to do all this creative work. When, you know, you have the guy with the drums, you have the guy with the guitar, you have, you know, people flying back and forth. I think they got people from like Cirque du Soleil to be in this movie. This movie takes everything and just blows it out of proportion, blows it out of the water. This might be one of the greatest movies ever made. I don't know. It depends on you, how you feel. I personally feel it's like one of the greatest, at least action films ever made. And the ideas and concepts of what George Miller, who I think was in the 60s or 70s when he made this film, it just, you, you just can't not see this movie as what it is. It's just a five star, 10 out of 10, two thumbs up, just pure joy of cinema and pure joy of action pure joy of adrenaline pure joy just of everything and when i was thinking about doing this top 10 list you know as most people do i'm like what film defines this decade what film really truly defines everything that is great about cinema and filmmaking because the 2010s are one of the, you know the great years decades as we always know and mad max is that film you know it's there's no other film like it there's no other film that will be like it unless uh, George Miller does another film in the Mad Max series, which I hope he does. But yeah, Mad Max Fury Road. If you haven't seen this movie, you need to see it because even if you're not an action film, you'll enjoy the spectacle. You'll enjoy the pure audacity of this film. And it's just Mad Max Fury Road, the one of the, the greatest film of the decade. So there you go. Um, yeah, that's it. That's my top 10 of the decade. So anyways, tell me what your favorite films of the decade are. It doesn't have to be a top 10. Tell me what your favorite film of the decade is. Is it Mad Max? Is it Get Out? Is it Ex Machina? Let me know. Uh, but that'll do it. So anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. Join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next. And of course, comment below on any videos you watch on my channel. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next decade, guys. Peace out.
What's up guys? Thank you so much for checking out Movie Emporium. I really appreciate it. If you want to, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button and the bell at the top. Find out what's coming next for Movie Emporium. Also, check out these two videos. They're amazing. I think they're awesome. I think you'll enjoy them too. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time.